Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. How is everybody doing? Or should I say good morning or good evening, depending on where you are right now, if you're watching us live from elsewhere in the world. But uh, we're coming to you from Sherwood Park, Alberta, and uh, it is afternoon. It's a beautiful afternoon out there, uh, which means I should probably go out and cut my grass one of these uh, even, uh, evening here, maybe tonight. But um, we have a special guest uh, joining us here today. And uh, uh, just before we get into that, though, I just want to make sure if our viewers out there can hear me loud and clear, let me know so we uh, just confirm that the sound is coming through loud and clear. Um, so um, welcome. Welcome to another episode of uh, Conversations with Dune and Friends. And, and today we have a, a fantastic and wonderful and fabulous friend joining us from, I think, my neck of the wood. I think he's also in Sherwood Park, Alberta, here with me in the same, uh, same city. And uh, uh, Mr. Kim Gates is joining us. And uh, so let me maybe do a quick introduction of Kim's background so you know who it is that you'll be hearing from for the next hour and a bit here, folks. Um, so uh, Kim Gates says, if life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans is a great lyric, uh, then it's likely because people relate to it. Uh, Kim Gates certainly does relate to it. Um, a singer and songwriter for many years, Kim uh, kept his songs and, and, and singing mostly to himself. When the economy changed uh, in 2014, uh, his, this oil field technologist and trainer soon found himself uh, with a, a new job title, uh, home dad, and uh, needed to get uh, out, some, uh, out of the house once a week. And uh, playing at st open stages led to uh, jobs hosting open stages, and, and of course later uh, steady music work, and uh, he's very thankful for that. He is influenced by the writing of Earl and, and Joel and uh, the music of uh, Blue, Radio, uh, Blue Rodeo and uh, uh, Tragically Hip. Um, a soulful storyteller uh, with, with a slight activist bent. Uh, Kim is um, happiest singing songs about stories that, that change our lives. Now, please well, uh, help me, folks, in welcoming our, our guest today, Mr. Kim Gates. Kim, uh, welcome to uh, Conversations with Dune and Friends. And, and today we're uh, happy to have you as a friend here of the conversation and the folks out there watching. How are you doing today, my friend? I am uh, I'm doing well, I think. I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, just happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I see your video is a little laggy on my side here, so hopefully that translates well for our viewers later. Uh, but you are plugged in, right? You're plugged in directly to the, yeah, the internet or Wi-Fi. Yeah, on Wi-Fi, actually, because of a different computer. So anyway, uh, if there's at some point we might need you to move so that uh, it's closer to the, the Wi-Fi or the router, if, if that's the case. But uh, it's stabilizing now, so good. Let's hope this stays right here. <laughs> so let me just, just check out with our viewer here. Uh, hopefully, um, they can all hear us. So uh, Kim, tell us a bit more of an expanded uh, introduction beyond um, the bio that, that I've read out for the group there. Tell us, how did, uh, how did you get to this point? Uh, fill in the blanks a little bit. Tell us the story <laughs> of Kim, the Kim story. How'd you get here, my friend? Uh, yeah. Uh, I am the, uh, I guess, product of, uh, of Scottish and American immigrants and, uh, and French Canadian settlers. Uh, born right here in Edmonton. Uh, went to high school here. Uh, went to university. Uh, messed around there a little bit, went to Nate, uh, played some football, played some hockey growing up, a little bit of soccer, a little baseball, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, took some guitar lessons that my mom made me take and I had to go and my fingers hurt and it was horrible. You know, it was, uh, again, one of those uh, incredible gifts you give to your kids, right? Like, I probably complained about every single lesson I went to for the per first couple of years. And, uh, and it's been, uh, I guess, the, the greatest gift I could have been given probably. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, went to, uh, went to university, went to Nate, uh, got a job, uh, ended up living in Calgary for, uh, for about five years, working in technology, working in, uh, in, uh, fuel cell development 
and uh, the economy changed down there. There was the tech, uh, the tech crash around uh, 2000, 2001. And uh, I ended up uh, getting a job in oil field companies and worked there until, uh, until everything fell apart in 2014. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for filling us in on that. And uh, hey, Kim, I know you used to be a, 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 do a lot of corporate training and, and trainer and whatnot. You got to use your training voice with this mic set up here. You're, you're coming in at one light, one green light. I want to see you at two to three green lights. So if we can okay. manage that, that would be awesome. Like, like imagine if you're just talking to a large group of people, my friend, that might be what is necessary here based on that mic setup the way you have it. I can absolutely do that. Uh, it's just a matter of projection. <laughs> I'll just project all the way out to show it. All <laughs> right. Let's project, my friend. <laughs> Let's Sounds project. Good. Let's project your voice all, the, all across Sherwood Park for the duration, if you could. It's only an hour and a bit. I know we, in training, sometimes we do the whole two, three, four days and whatever. This is an hour and a bit. So I think uh, we'll, we'll crank it up there for the viewers yeah. because... Uh, walk in the park. All right, my friend. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, let's continue then. Let's continue. Uh, so music, um, what, does it mu what does music mean to you? I know some people would say different things, but I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. What does music mean to you? Uh, companionship. It, uh, it starts right there. Uh, I feel like as long as I've got my music, I'm never alone. Uh, mm -hmm. Even while I was doing a lot of training. I was doing a lot of training down in the US. I was away from home a lot. I, uh, I bought myself a, a pawn shop guitar at a shop in Texas and just left it, uh, left it with uh, my office mates down there. And uh, yeah, as long as I had a guitar with me, uh, you can get through a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of time alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, more than anything else, it's, uh, it's companionship. It's a constant companion. Wonderful. Great, great. Um, songwriting. Uh, when did you start songwriting and, and how did you bump into it? And because it seems to be your thing that, that you really spend a lot of time with and uh, quite good at it. And uh, I've heard uh, quite a few of your original songs and various opportunities there. Tell us, how, when did you start with songwriting? How did that happen? <sighs> how did that happen? Uh, yeah. I think I've been writing songs for years, uh, I did a lot of uh, in high school, uh, junior high, high school, uh, through uh, my first couple of years of university. Uh, I did a lot of uh, a lot of poetry reading, poetry writing, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that's where it started. And uh, then I kind of. Uh, put that together with uh, the little bit of guitar I was playing and that uh, resulted in, I guess, some songwriting. Uh, the first, mm -hmm. uh, the first writings, I guess, uh, that, uh, that I came up with. So I guess it was, uh, you know, just, uh, it was between my, uh, my Nate years and my university years. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. So, so uh, later on in life, it wasn't like you were songwriting when we were, you know, twelve or ten, or like some uh, some people are. You kind of really in the uh, adulthood and and in the sort of uh, post secondary education years. Cool. Thank you for that. And uh, um, now I know we have a bunch of photos to share with our viewers, and and when we get to those, you'll be able to tell us stories that relate to uh, to those photos. But also, you have, we have some video clips that we're going to share with our viewers as well. And, um, you know, one of the songs that I know I've heard you play at uh, uh, the Uptown Blues Jam hosted by Tony Rufo, where I take care of the, all the technical aspects for Tony there and, and, and folks, uh, you play this song. And you know the song I'm referring to, I think. Uh, I think it's, uh, is it's This Kid or something like that. I'm going to pull it up. And uh, early on, we just want to share your music, uh, this is your original music uh, with our viewers so that they get a sense of the kind of music that you uh, you write and, and, and perform. So, so tell us about that while I bring up that clip. Uh, you want me to tell you about the song? Yeah, yeah. how did you come to writing it? What, what was your you know background that says, yeah, I'm gonna write this song and uh, tell us anything about it before I go ahead and roll the clip. Uh, yeah, this is, just a, this is just a song that, uh, so I became a parent later in my life. Uh, I wasn't, uh, uh, I, I, uh, 
I came upon parenting late and uh, found it to be a struggle mm -hmm. as uh, you know, I, uh, I watched other people parent and, uh, and yeah, you know, you hear people say, Oh, well, this was hard or that was hard, but uh, until you do it yourself, it's, uh, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just uh, those choices that parents make and, you have to make choices every day regarding your kid and you beat mm -hmm. yourself up about, uh, you know, the, uh, perceived mistakes or you, you know, you try to make uh, the best choices you can in the moment. And sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. And, uh, but, uh, one thing I've found somewhat universal is that, uh, uh there's a lot of parents out there beating themselves up and, uh, I am certainly no exception. And uh, that's kind of what the song's about. It's about uh, being a parent. It's kind of an homage to parents and, uh, and the sacrifices and the choices you make and the hours you spend beating yourself up about, uh, about you know, mistakes and things like that. Yeah. I'm going to roll the clip here. So I'll take myself off camera so that we can have the full screen here. Uh, it's go like that. And... Uh, uh, let me know if you can hear the sound. If you can't, just, just give me the signal. Got it. I'm going to wrap up my hopes and all pack up my dreams. Place them all in a box with my young managed schemes. I'll build that box strong, less fear weaken the seams. And I'll hand that box off to this kid. See, a man doesn't know when his time comes to dead. How to keep the goods good and prevent the bads bad. But he'll wear all his choices. Both happy and sad And hope for the best for this kid He'll teach her the lessons he's learned through his life For the makings of joys and preventings of strifes He'll teach her the uses of hammers and knives To build a big life for this kid Her small button nose, her mama's big eyes and brow furrows like those I see in the mirror when I stand to shame. I've instilled in her fears that I'll take to my grave. I'll let her climb on my back and we'll walk to the sun. Where I'll fight every demon with love or cup. Tall at the gates of hell or the one, and I'll pound on those gates when this kid. Fantastic. 
Awesome. Now, when did you uh, write this particular song, uh, Kim? Uh, I think I wrote that about a year ago. Mm -hmm. About a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, sharing that with our viewers yeah, that there was, now. That one's fairly, uh, fairly newish. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you this question early on. Okay. If you were to guess... Yeah, if you were to guess how many um, songs you've written over the years, what would that number be, roughly speaking, in the ballpark of? Uh, you know what? It's not a great number. Uh, I'm not uh, prolific mm -hmm. the same way I think other songwriters are. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe mm -hmm. 20. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. 20. Yeah, Something yeah. Like cool. That. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful. So in terms of the um, kind of music that you prefer, um, we joked the other day in the Uptown Blues Jam that uh, you kind of like a soulful song and, and not a lot of kind of really fast driving upbeat song and uh, you kind of really, um, is that true? Like, like tell us more about that. What is it about these uh, kind of soulful and, and kind of sad songs uh, or maybe a little bit more reflective and whatever. Tell us about your taste in, in the kind of music that you write. Uh, so let, we need to, we, we need to separate out mm -hmm. uh, a part of that. So yeah. as far as music, I love, like, I love rocking tunes. I love rock and fun tunes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, CCR and, uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, tragically hip stuff that rocks and, uh, you know, fun songs and, uh, Jack Johnson songs and yep. you know happy songs, but yep. uh, as far as the songs that get me, mm -hmm. it's usually a song about you know something uh, something heavy, mm -hmm. and I I I end up writing I end up writing sad songs and angry songs, mm. and, uh, and I don't know why that is, but mm -hmm. uh, but it is and. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it becomes a problem when you're trying to put together a set list for a, a live performance because you're like, <laughs> okay, okay, well, I can only put like, you can only put so many sad songs in the same set list. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was Bill Bourne who said to me, uh, ballads are like salads, one a day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. so, but so yeah, you don't uh, play so a lot I, of. Uh, I don't know why that is, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, th I think it part of it comes down to just like the songs that mean the most, right? When mm -hmm. I talk about uh, singing songs about the stories that change our lives, we're talking about the, the things that we're all, we all experience universally. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, pain, uh, sorrow, death. Uh, I, I have, I have, an, you know, I probably have three, three funeral songs, songs mm -hmm. about funerals. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, that's, you know, that's where our life happens. Uh, yeah. I, and our life happens in these, these heavy moments that were, where all of a sudden you look back years, years from then you're like, Oh, my life changed in this moment after, mm -hmm. after this, my life was completely different. And, uh, yeah. And I like to explore the, the, the margins around those, those times and spaces, I guess. And that could be yeah, why. Yeah. But I love happy songs. I love having fun. I'm a fun <laughs> guy sometimes. There you go. Well, you know what you can pull is, uh, I don't know who wrote that song, but remember the song from the 60s? Um, it's a birthday song, or it sounds like a birthday song. It's, it's my party and I cry if I want to. <laughs> That's a very upbeat kind of tempo and fast driving song. You know the song I'm <laughs> talking about, right? Right? No? Does that ring a bell? I don't I know do. who I sang that though. Yeah. Uh, it, it's my party and yeah. I don't cry if I want to. That, that's the song I'm talking about. No? Yeah, <laughs> so you could do that. You could uh, make a sad song. Yeah, yeah. You would make a really sad song to a really high energy driving beat with a full band behind you. <laughs> it's, it's been done. Uh, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the greatest joys of my life was figuring out that Rocket Man is really, really a lonely, sad song. Uh, <laughs> you know, with these, these great uplifting Rocket Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's all about being alone, being on the yeah, road, yeah. being alone. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, 
and until you sit there and just like really read it, listen to it, uh, uh -huh. or experience it. Yeah. Working on the road by yourself, uh, all of a sudden, yeah, the, the song makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell us uh, these days, uh, you, uh, you you prior to COVID, you'd played a lot of music, is what I understand. Is that right? Uh, you you kind of a uh, bit of your preoccupation. Other than family, of course, family is important. Where we all need to spend time with families, but uh, other than that, music is your main preoccupation. Uh, well, occupation and preoccupation. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, between running an open stage out of Cafe Haven mm -hmm. uh, and running uh, an open stage and jam out of the Stony Plain Bar, uh, these were mm -hmm. uh, these were two of uh, the, the biggest parts of my my business and looking for yeah. sponsors and that type of thing so yeah, yeah that's yeah it's uh aside from some uh, part-time labor work uh yeah that uh, that didn't interfere with looking after my kid uh yeah mm -hmm. my work in music was my preoccupation and occupation uh so yeah the COVID there you go so you uh COVID's yeah been hard yeah, yeah. So, so full time, full time professional music musician, uh, doing what's necessary to, uh, uh, you know, obviously take care of the family, but both uh, in time and uh, uh, participation and, and, and care and all of that, including uh, this being your, your profession. So, so COVID, how how hard has it impacted you? Uh, I mean, we can probably predict the story, but but I want to hear from somebody who who who. Um, is a full-time musician, professional, and all that. Um, tell us your view on how COVID affected you, positive and negative. Uh, so, uh, from a financial standpoint, devastating, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. devastating, devastating, devastating. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, it's been very hard on our family, um, mm -hmm. but uh, there are. There are a few flecks of gold in, in all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of it is, uh, other than not being able to get together with other musicians, mm -hmm. uh, I am very comfortable being alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so uh, COVID, COVID's fed that. That that part of it's been... Um, A blessing? You know, so the the solitude other than uh, other actually my problem right now is not quite enough solitude mm -hmm. uh being as i was at home with my with my daughter because mm -hmm. she isn't in school and uh and not in daycare mm -hmm. um uh, i don't quite have enough solitude because i'm with her all mm -hmm. day all the mm -hmm. time yeah. uh, so uh finding some time where i'm just alone by myself with my thoughts has uh, has actually been been a little bit of a struggle, yeah. but uh, yeah. But at the same time, I've had this great opportunity to spend all this time with my kid. That uh, you know, she's going to be going to grade one next year. So wow. uh, every year, moving forward, if you look at it from a, a strictly time based standpoint, mm -hmm. I'm going to see my daughter less and less mm -hmm. every year. Forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh so having this time with her was uh was very special and i tried to appreciate it uh during mm -hmm. covid it's been a little more difficult because it, it limits the number of things we can do mm -hmm. uh, experiences i can give to her mm -hmm. but before it hit we spent a lot of time uh, skating and uh, we went skiing this year uh, we would have spent a bunch of time at the pool mm -hmm. uh, we spent a lot of time though we you know we learned to we uh i she learned to ride her bike mm -hmm. we uh, spent a lot of time walking uh walking uh, riding her scooter mm -hmm. just being out in nature being outside um now i want to uh, hear a song i want to hear a song written about scooter right i want to <laughs> hear a song you write about scooter it could be a sad scooter it could be a happy scooter but write us a song about scooter my friend <laughs> i think uh i think mm -hmm. Scooter is probably a good theme because I, in my head, I have trouble picturing a sad song about about riding your scooter. So, I yeah. think uh, I think you may have uh, yeah. I think you may have planted a good seed there. There you go. You can plan the whole kind of 
birthday party or celebration or show or fun kind of party where you play music and it's just all about scooter nothing but scooter the whole night you play all scooter songs that you write how's that <laughs> <laughs> i'll i'll work on it i'll work on that all sure. right cool cool uh, well thank you for sharing that and uh you know, so that's that's sort of the COVID reality for for particularly full time musicians, uh, definitely, or artists of any kind, or gig workers, really, uh, right, uh, are quite impacted. Uh, many of us, but uh, so so tell us more about uh, when did you move to Sherwood Park? When did you become my somewhat uh, same city, somewhat semi night neighbor? <laughs> uh actually, I don't live in Sherwood Park. Oh, um, I misunderstood that, that somehow. Okay, yeah, I, I saw. Well, you People think I live either in Stony Plain mm -hmm. or in Sherwood Park mm. because I spend a lot of time musically out in those two places. Ah, I see. Uh, so, yeah, I because I did so much work on music between working farmers markets in Sherwood Park yeah. and uh, the work I did at Cafe Haven, booking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. playing and yeah. hosting out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a number of the the perception has long been that uh, I'm you know, from Sherwood <laughs> Park. And there you then go. they then they'll say, well, it must be a long way to go to Stony Plain to, to host yeah. a jam out there. And well, yeah. it is, but I'm not leaving from Sherwood Park. Yeah, there uh, you go. So, so, so but, um, uh, you are an honorary um, Sherwood Parkian, or is that even a term? But uh, yeah. That would be uh, that would be something kind. I have a lot of friends out in Sherwood Park, or who mm -hmm. went to school originally out in Sherwood Park, and now they've uh, they've mm -hmm. scattered uh, mm -hmm. the diaspora of of Sherwood Parkians as they've uh, traveled out. But uh, yeah, I've got a lot of a lot of friends from out in Sherwood Park. Uh, you, you know, I pride myself on learning the English language pretty well since I arrived here as an immigrant 30 some years ago. But diaspora, what is that all about? <laughs> uh, I think it actually. Uh, think, so I'm going to get here, but uh, I, I think it comes from uh, from uh, Hebrew or mm. from uh uh, Jews years yeah. ago being spread about the earth. Okay, and, good to and, know. And uh, that is the the diaspora. And, diaspora. Uh, now, any any population that gets spread out uh, uh, across the earth for for whatever reason uh, is uh, occasionally uh, referred to as such. But uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. I just looked it up. The dictionary. It, yeah, to, uh, it's. Yeah, it's diaspora right? and yeah, diaspora, like P.O., right? Uh, the dispensing of the Jews beyond Israel. Okay, you knew, yeah, you were correct. You were correct. So see, I learned something yeah. new today. I learned something new today. So uh, awesome. I can just shut down for right after this uh, conference here and, and not take any calls from my client for the rest of the day because I learned something new and that, that's all I needed today. <laughs> I wonder if that's the uh, origin of the, the word disperse. Um, Could be. Or the other way around. Yeah, it could but, be. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure we have some, uh, what is it, uh, linguists, linguists in the uh, audience right now or later who would chime in and tell us all the stories and histories around that. But uh, until they do, by the way, our viewers, please um, comment and, and ask him questions uh, so he can uh, answer your questions. Put them on the hot seat if you like. Uh, but, but tell us, that I'm going to bring up some photos here and we're going to talk through the various sort of elements or, or aspects of your uh, kind of musical life as well as family life and, and other life, uh, corporate life and whatever have you so far. So I'm going to just start, uh, I'm going to go random, okay? We could have planned it out and made it in a very specific scripted kind of thing. It just, that would just take a lot more work from both of us. So we're going to just go ahead and do a random kind of, you're going to talk about this, um, this uh, first photo here. Um, Tell us who took this photo. I can see the, uh, the 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 name below there, but you probably remember who took this photo, right? Oh yes, that would be Maureen Ames. Um, we should uh, big shout yes. out to her. Uh, she was kind enough to take this photo at uh, at a benefit. Uh, I think that picture was taken at a benefit for uh, the. Uh, the Humboldt Broncos, 
um, after uh, after that tragic uh, tragic event, and uh, mm-hmm. there were some people in the city uh, putting on a concert to raise money for uh, for the Humboldt Broncos, and uh, I was uh, I was uh, blessed to uh, to be able to uh, contribute uh, a performance to that to the, yeah. that effort, and Maureen. A- Ames was kind enough to come out and take some photos and uh, that photo came from there. She's a great supporter of the music business and she takes great uh, action uh, and still photos for, uh, for musicians. So if you're looking for a headshot or something like that, she'd be, uh, you know, please, uh, please uh, give her a shout because she does uh, great work. I think that that's uh, probably a, a better a, a better photo than i deserve <laughs> having looked at me in the mirror yeah. occasionally i uh i think i probably look better there than uh than in real life so uh yeah shout out to her she does great work you, you know um everybody loves maureen's uh, photos and she's done a lot of um good uh, service to the music uh, community musicians uh, in around town here and uh, so she had uh, taken a lot of great photos and and uh, so you just one more example of um that who had benefited from that um so so um again kim if you can a uh, little bit louder on the uh, vo- uh, on the uh, volume that would be awesome so tell us about this next one uh Again, Maureen, and this is the black and white. This is the serious dude look. This is uh, what song would this be a go with? This would be the go song that. Tell me one of your songs that you've written. Tell me, pick a twenty some song that you've written so far. Pick a song and say this would be what that song. You know, like if you had a, a picture for that song, it would be that song. Can you think of a song? One of your twenty some songs that you've written so far. Uh, that that <laughs> look is. Uh... That would go with the Chinese worker song. There you go. The Chinese worker song. And you performed that the other day, so I heard it. And, uh, um, yeah, it's the um, great, uh, wonderful. Well, tell us just a tiny bit about that, that song, what, what caused you to write it, and maybe just a little bit. Uh, that, was, uh, that was kind of a true story song. Uh, mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll see something in the news and decide, you know what, I need to write a song about that. And, uh, and yeah, so that that song I probably wrote somewhere around 2006. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the Alberta economy was booming, and uh, there was uh, there were some Chinese workers who were brought over to to build a to build a plant or build part of the uh, the I guess oil sands plants up north. Mm-hmm. And uh, this worker or these guys uh, were trapped in a tank collapse and died. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember in the news there were there were stories about it in the news, and I heard some people uh, in a lunchroom where I was working saying some insensitive stuff. And uh, it really got me thinking. And uh, years later, it, it the story stuck with me. And then a few years later, I. Uh, so I didn't, oh, I didn't write that song in 2006. Uh, I would have wrote it probably in 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. But a few years later, I was thinking about that again. And uh, and so I went back and did some research. And there were all kinds of odd things happening around that time. There were Chinese workers being brought in mm-hmm. from China by a company. Uh, we don't know what company, but the reports uh, in message boards and that kind of thing were workers up north were passing by and they were kept in fenced compounds, locked fenced compounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, these, these workers who came here to work and to try to, you know, make some money and send money back to their families. But it was like they were brought and kept in fenced locked compounds, mm-hmm. which I thought was odd. And mm-hmm. then there were, you know, there were all these, uh, there were all these battles about about what they were doing. Mm-hmm. So there's the the economic aspect of it. Are you when you bring in cheap labor, uh, you know everything in Alberta was getting more expensive, but now you bring in cheap labor, which drives labor, you know, the the rates that workers can charge down, mm-hmm. even though all of a sudden the province is booming and co- buying a house now costs a fortune, but mm-hmm. uh, there uh, the government is allowing 
companies to bring in foreign workers. At the same mm -hmm. time, you can see mm -hmm. it from the economics other side, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, we're we're bringing in these workers because there's capital available to build stuff. Mm -hmm. There aren't enough people to build stuff right now, and we need mm -hmm. to build it all while the money's here. Because mm -hmm. as we can look around our province right now, there's you know not a whole lot of capital available. There's not a whole lot of development going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but then there's the whole thing. Well, are we pushing development too hard? Should we let it happen naturally and not uh, unnaturally inflate these things? Uh, mm -hmm. And but then if you try to tamper with the markets, do you end up shooting yourself in the foot? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are you cool. bring over so so the song these foreign workers properly educated right. for the work they're doing? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the union guys would be like, hey. Uh, how do we know those guys are qualified? Um, and at the mm -hmm. same time, it's, you know, anyway, lots of stuff going on. But all I could think about at the time was uh, these two guys came here to build a future for their families and they weren't going to go home again. And it mm -hmm. kind of reminded me of that uh, National Film Board vignette where they talk about the uh, building of the railroad and how there's mm -hmm. one dead Chinese worker for every mile of the CPR, mm -hmm. and uh, and I thought, wow, that sounds eerily familiar. Yeah. So, so in other words, you were kind of the song probably focused on the human uh, element and the human uh, aspect of the, the the situation there. And uh, cool, cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, again, you observe life and and you come up with inspiration to write about it uh, from your viewpoint and and then perform it. Uh, this is. Uh, some of your band members here, right? Uh, so this is what I've been trying to busy myself with during COVID. So uh, mm -hmm. I, through the Stratham Community League, I got together with some people and we, uh, uh, we put on one seniors residence concert out in their courtyard. The seniors were up in their uh, suites and uh, so what you've got there is uh, Lindsay Buchert, who has been playing all of these concerts with me, and she's such a lovely soul and uh, a great musician. Um, and uh, so I started doing that, and then some real estate agents uh, with uh, River City Remax uh, got in touch with me, and they said, hey, we'd like to help out where we can, and we started putting together some shows. And then uh, my friend Drew Price with the fiddle there, he uh, he agreed to come out and play some as well. So that's one of the shows that we did. Um, and uh, the idea just being out, giving back, because I can only imagine what it's like in some of these places. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is, I'm going to be odd here and look straight into the camera here. But, uh, oh yeah, that's Shepherd's Care Vanguard. Uh, so Shepherd's Care Kensington actually had COVID cases and a death. Uh, so we played there, we played Shepherd's Care Vanguard where this picture was taken. Uh, and I can, you know, these facilities when they're all locked down, um, it's gotta be hard. It's gotta be hard on the workers working there. You're trying to keep everybody isolated, but there's only so many people. There's only so much money to go around for shifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and you're trying to keep people alive at the same time, the quality of life for those people that are being kept alive might just be sitting in a room staring at four walls for mm -hmm. days. Yeah. So uh, we're just trying to sh share some joy. Yeah, yeah. Just get out, share some joy uh, in any way we can because, you know, and it's also nice just to get out and play some music too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a uh, friend, Lori, Lori also um, uh, chime in here and said clapping. So she enjoyed the... Uh, uh, sentiment you shared earlier about uh, this photo here. And uh, so we have 30 some photos left, my friend. I'm going to go through them fairly quick. Tell us a, a quick story or a sentiment about it. And we're going to move on. And then we got some videos to show. And I got some questions for you yet. So we're going to do it fairly quickly. A and if you could do me a favor again, imagine if you're speaking to one of your training classes, use that voice if you could, that would be helpful. Normally, speaking normally is fine, but your mic setup is such that we're going to have to overcome that by by just just projecting there, and I know, I know you can. Okay, that's a picture of uh, myself and uh, my wife and daughter. We're at the Nutcracker, I think, 
uh, at the uh, Jubilee Auditorium uh, Christmas time, and uh, we were taking Gwen to see the Nutcracker for the first time. Cool. Um, yeah, that's uh, winter. Is that winter out there, or is it? Oh yeah, that's winter out there. This was just before Christmas. This would have been December uh, last year, or maybe the year before. Not certain. Mm hmm. Cool. Cool. So, um, you know, I, I, my sons are going to hear this possibly because they're on Facebook as well. But uh, uh, we, we, my wife and I, when we had two sons, I was saying, you know what? It'd be nice to have a daughter if we could. But but she was kind of done it too. And and uh, our, our sons are wonderful, fantastic uh, sons. Uh, you know. Uh, but every time I look at uh, people who have daughters and sons and uh, both of them in the mix, uh, I get a little bit envy still. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we're blessed with two wonderful, fantastic uh, sons. So uh, they're, uh, you know, in university again here in um, September. So they're a bit older. Oh, wow. So, yeah, tell us about this one. So I talked a little bit earlier about uh, the time I spent uh, in Sherwood Park and in uh, Stony Plain. Uh, with music. Uh, this was, I finally had the opportunity to do some music work uh, here in my own community of Strathern in Edmonton. And uh, so this was taken at the Strathern Hall and uh, they had me come in and run an open stage, what we call Strathern Open Stage, SOS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we were trying to do it once a month or once every two months until uh, COVID hit and uh, that kind of broke things up for us. Uh, but we're going to actually be getting started here again, probably in August with some uh, with some more uh, community music. I don't mm -hmm. know whether we're going to just run a, uh, a small show with a couple of people or whether we're going to try to run some sort of an outdoor open stage. Uh, but that uh, but we're definitely going to be doing some sort of music out of Strathern Community Hall, uh, the new Strathern Hall in uh, in August here coming up. Cool. It's probably in support of Art Walk as well. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, um, yeah, I recognize the sign there. Tell us about this uh, this photo. This is a picture I took just recently. I'm in the middle of writing a small article for the uh, Strathern uh, Community League uh, news uh, regarding the closure of the Brick and Whiskey. Mm. Uh, the announcement went out uh, this past month that uh, the Brick and Whiskey will not be reopening mm. uh, post-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, due to issues with their landlord and, uh, and the inability to come to some sort of agreement on a new lease mm -hmm. uh, moving forward. Uh, and this place has been such a joy to so many people. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, it was, uh, before, it became a, before it was a music venue, it was just a friendly place to stop in. When I was a stay-at-home dad, I would go out and play, mu uh, play hockey on Thursday nights, and it was the only night of the week I really got out. Mm -hmm. And uh, after hockey, you're kind of wired a little bit and I'd have to go home and just sit and watch TV for three hours after hockey. Mm -hmm. and, or I could stop off and have a drink at the only place that was open near my neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I started uh, having a beer at the Brick and Whiskey. And mm -hmm. uh, that became a place that uh, it was like a second home mm -hmm. where nobody knew me, but I developed a lot of friendships. And then all of a sudden, Bill Bourne was hosting one of the most popular music shows in Edmonton there every mm -hmm. Thursday night, mm -hmm. which was when I had been going anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, that happened about a year after I started going to the Brick and Whiskey. And uh, to have it gone, I feel bad for the owners who did some tremendous work taking what used to be a sketchy bar and making it a popular, friendly place to be. Uh, I said, uh, you know, the, uh, the owners made the staff like family and the staff made patrons like family. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a tremendously beautiful place and it was a beautiful time, a beautiful moment in Edmonton and uh, a tremendously powerful place for me. I'm very, very sad to see it and the people who frequented it, the people who staffed it. I'm going to be sad to see all of them go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure that story is uh, playing out in a few other places, uh, not only in Alberta but but elsewhere in the world as well. Um, so this is your uh, sort of training days. Tell us a bit about that. Of course, so, when you did it, there were actually people in the room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's a second photo that I sent you of uh, of uh, a 
end of yeah there you go end of class shot uh so yeah i uh i started working for national oil well varco in about 2008 if i'm not mistaken and uh i worked there in engineering and failure analysis uh, stuff would break they'd send it to me i'd have to do uh, a metallurgical autopsy so to speak hey 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 just just to kind of just confirm being in, in engineering and, and all of that does the term or, or the acronym F E M A ring a bell to you? Ring a bell to you? Yes. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, welcome to you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I would uh, I would perform autopsies on broken tools. Uh, then, over time, uh, National Oil Well Varco bought a bit company, and with that comes uh, a lot more drilling analysis work. And uh, so I moved into uh, drilling analysis and uh, uh, what we call the applications engineering, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, and bid engineering. And then was given the opportunity to do – so uh, while working in failure analysis, I ended up traveling around the world uh, teaching the basics, the, the basics of – gathering information, gra gathering, uh, I guess, evidence, and so that we could have good evidence coming in to help us with these failure investigations. And uh, I realized that I had a love for training. Uh, while I, I was a, a very, very, very solid uh, technologist, um, I really, my love was in teaching and training. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I was given the opportunity to join the training department in I believe it was uh, 2012, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was a phenomenal phenomenal time, and uh, yeah, so this is one of my class of learners, a bunch of young engineers that uh, the company had just hired. Uh, I would do about six of these uh, training courses a year, uh, drive, fly down to uh, Texas for three weeks and teach the basics of drilling and the drilling, um, uh, the drilling industry, uh, the basics of drill bits, the base, basics of drilling tools and what they're for, what they do, why we have them, what problems they solve, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's, uh, geeky, that's my geeky, classes. Geeky, geeky uh, engineering stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geeky engineering stuff. Gosh, I love geeky engineering stuff. There you go. So, so where was this? Like one some... of the uh, that I believe was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's either Sherwood Park or that will be Collingwood, one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so this is Tyler Johnson beside me. Uh, a great friend, great musician, um, and we spent a lot of time, uh, our friendship developed out of busking. Mm -hmm. uh, we met at Kaylee Cardinal's open stage in, uh, at uh, what used to be um, oh, Sideliners, mm -hmm. uh, the bar Sideliners, and uh, found out that we both lived in the same neighborhood and we were both unemployed at the time. And uh, he said, we should jam. And I said, okay. And uh, we started jamming. And then uh, the next time he wanted to jam, I said, well, come over and we'll drink coffee. He said, well, let's go jam on the street for money. Mm. And uh, my busking career was started. Uh, until then, I had only busked once. And mm -hmm. that was in Aberdeen, Scotland. I had like given a busker some money just because I was jonesing to play a guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler introduced me to busking and we played farmers markets. We, we probably played two, 300 hours worth of farmers markets over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which gave us, uh, really developed our stage show. And also just, uh, it was a good chance to get out and play music in the community. And, uh, yeah. So that's just a picture of Tyler and I at, uh, at a farmer's market, mm -hmm. uh, which is something we do, we did and do a lot. We, uh, mm -hmm. we were just at Collingwood on Sunday uh, playing a no singing show, uh, just playing mm -hmm. instrumentals for a few hours. 
<laughs> yeah, who knew? Who knew? No singing show would be a phrase that we would uh, fling around uh, these days, eh? So, um, yeah. Uh, this is a, a shot of the Stony Plain Hotel. It's called the Old Bar. The Old Bar in the Stony Plain Hotel in uh, Stony Plain, Alberta. Uh, so uh, that is uh, a typical shot of a uh, Saturday afternoon pre-COVID uh, with uh, some folks on the stage playing music. And I am taking that picture from behind the soundboard, uh, running the soundboard. Um, over the time, you know, from the time I started, it's, uh, it's developed. Yeah, there's another picture of, uh, look at the, the view from the stage of, uh, a bunch of musicians it's uh it's just such a friendly environment it's an old it's an old small town alberta tavern uh you know inexpensive good food friendly people and uh just a mix of a pile of people so every uh every saturday afternoon from uh from two to oftentimes six we advertise at two to five uh, but uh, usually it ends up running two to six, sometimes two to eight, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how many people are there to play and uh, how many people are there enjoying the music. Uh, we have a great yeah. owner who uh, supports the music and great staff. So, Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lori uh, has chimed in there. She said she's just down the road uh, in Parkland County, and uh, she said uh, cash only, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, so she, that's, she knows that's the place. Really she knows the place. I know this place. This is Cafe Haven in Sherwood Park, of course. That is Cafe Haven in Sherwood Park. Uh, so I would run the I would run it as a, a performance. So we'd hire a performer to come in, play the first hour. And then we'd have an open stage for an hour for musicians who just showed up. Um, and then once a month, I would do what's called a table jam. Mm -hmm. And that is we just put everybody around the table instead of sitting around all evening watching other people play and then getting up to play three songs. Mm -hmm. You just pile everybody around the table, treat the table like a campfire and everybody plays on everything. Mm -hmm. So I've got microphones set up so people can harmonize and uh, we've got some guitars plugged in so people can play some lead stuff and be heard. And uh, yeah, and everyone plays on everything. You get to play music you wouldn't necessarily play. If you're not a country person, you play a lot of rock, but you don't always play country. Well, you, here you're going to play some country stuff. If you're a country person and, uh, oh, I, I don't play a whole lot of rock, well, you're going to have the opportunity to play on some rock stuff or some jazz mm -hmm. stuff or some uh, folk stuff. So uh yeah, the uh, the table jams at Cafe Haven, um, you know that was uh, that was a lot of fun too. Uh, eventually, uh, we are likely to end up running some more at Strathern Open Stage, and hopefully again back at Cafe Haven uh, post COVID here. Cool, cool. Yeah, Cafe Haven is a nice place. Uh, I, I used to take my uh, uh, some of my employees as well as uh, some of the clients that we had to kind of go there and, and just just chat and it's a nice uh, very uh, friendly and uh, almost family feel to it and uh, uh, somewhat quaint and uh, that's that's really uh, really good actually I used to go there uh, quite often Trans that's another shot from cafe Haven that's miss Hannah Gazzo, a mm -hmm. fantastic young artist who was the so there uh, I would have her back over the years but she was the first uh, she was the first feature act that I ever had at Cafe Haven. I think she was 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's 14 years old and writes songs like she's 60. Mm. Just like these soulful, smart, beautiful songs. Uh, she plays beautifully. She sings even better. Uh, Miss Hannah Gazzo is... Uh, just the kindest, most beautiful person and uh, an outstanding musician. Mm -hmm. uh, she won the homegrown competition at, uh, at, uh, oh, what's that? Uh, what's the big, oh, darn it. The, the big, big Valley Jam, big Valley Jamboree. Uh, yeah, she won the homegrown competition, not the kids' homegrown competition, the whole homegrown competition, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, last year or the year before. Yeah, and uh, ended up playing on the main stage. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, she's uh, she's outrageously good. 
Yeah. Uh, this Listen, is a picture of Tyler just, Johnson just, and I. Um, oh. A quick thing. We got lots of photos yet. We got lots of videos. We got lots of questions for you. Uh, if you can keep it fairly quick, we can move on from these photos. Otherwise, we'll be here for uh, three hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell us something anytime, unique about this. Uh, unique about this. Uh, this was just a road trip that Tyler Johnson and I took to play some music and uh, just thought it was an interesting picture because it just says big rock. So uh, this is a picture of... Uh, the uh, the trio with uh, with Lauren Lynn playing uh, yeah. or singing harmonies in support of my uh, my fringe show last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your trio um, is it? Uh, I know violin and uh, what's all the instruments that you typically play on a typical trio show here? Uh, so a typical trio show is Tyler Johnson on guitar, uh, Drew Price on fiddle, and myself on guitar uh, with uh, Tyler playing a lot of lead uh, between uh, Tyler and Drew they'll split the leads occasionally Tyler will play uh, box drum as well uh, and uh, yeah so that's you know and we'll play a bunch of jazzy stuff some country stuff some pub stuff it all depends on where we're playing the pub show is very different than uh, than maybe the coffee shop show that kind of thing mm -hmm. Uh, this is a picture. So other things I'm working on, I'm in the middle of trying to put together uh, a small EP of, uh, of some of my original work. And, uh, this is Brandon Lyons, uh, who played drums on the, uh, on the album for me. And, uh, we're pointing inside the control room to, uh, Mr. Harry Gregg over at Riverdale Recorders and, uh, kind of wondering what the heck is he doing in there because he just told us to wait so uh we just <laughs> had to get a shot here's another shot from inside the control room of uh brandon and uh uh harry greg and uh, myself and uh yeah just working uh covid put uh, a little bit of a a little bit of a, a the brakes on uh the on the work because uh getting cash to uh put together to uh to buy some more studio time has been uh, a bit of a struggle. Uh, here's another, sh here's a shot of Strathern Open Stage. Uh, this is the Strathern Community Hall, uh, where again, where we, uh, and they've got fantastic lighting. Uh, they've got actual stage lighting, fantastic audio equipment. It's just a great place um, to do some audio work or to put on a show or to put on a virtual show. And they've been working on developing their capacity to do that. So if anyone out there is a musician looking for a place to uh, use as a studio where you can put people together without having them too close, uh, Strathern Community Hall, uh, you can contact me and I can put you in touch with them. Uh, Another shot of Strathern Community Hall, but this time I'm doing a table jam at Strathern Community Hall. And I believe we did this one just, this is just like January, I think, end of January. This was just before COVID hit, I think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, here's a show with the trio. Uh, we're at Blowers and Grafton. We've got Drew Price again on fiddle. Tyler Johnson, who is leaving to uh, head out to Victoria. He's going to be... Uh, starting the next uh, chapter of his life with his mm -hmm. girlfriend in Victoria here, uh, right. uh, leaving next week. And we're at Blowers and Grafton on White Ave. Right, right. Uh, so on the right is someone I want to introduce. That is Joe DeShane in the uh, Canada hat. Uh, Joe DeShane was one of my first music companions, music uh, duo partners. Um, and uh, this is a sh from a show that I played with he and Drew Price on Canada Day last year. And uh, just wanted to make sure I included a picture of Joe in, uh, in the mix here because uh, uh, I often say I've, I never sound better than when I'm playing with Joe. Um, he's mm -hmm. uh, just such a great musical partner and good musician, good friend. Uh, oh, I didn't know I included this picture. That's a picture of Miss Rio March from uh, a show I did... Uh, it was the uh, it was the opposite of the ice uh, the uh, ice sculptures. There was someone making there were people making sand sculptures on White Ave last year, and uh, Miss Rhea Mar Miss Rhea March was uh, handling music and uh, had me come in and play some music, and uh, I was so grateful for that opportunity. 
And uh, yeah, that was just an awesome picture. I'm so happy for it. Uh, there's a sh there is Mr. Joe Deshane again. Uh, you can also find him as Bobblehead Joe, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he. Uh, that's a show we did at Gracie Jane's in St. Albert, just uh, again uh, late last year, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I included this because it is one of my favorite places in the world, the Commodore Restaurant downtown. They are back; they have reopened. I I've just heard. So if you're downtown, you're looking for a place to sit down and have a, a reasonably priced breakfast or all day breakfast, or uh, they've got, uh, you know, they've got Chinese food, but they've also have like diner staples as well. Uh, like a hot hamburger sandwich, that kind of thing. Uh, the Commodore restaurant downtown between 107th and 108th on Jasper on the north side of Jasper. And uh, they would do brunch shows. There's Tyler Johnson and I after playing a brunch show at uh, at the Commodore, and it's one of my favorite places in the world to play because there is no expectation. I can sort of pull out anything from my uh, from my bucket of of tunes, and uh, you know I'm just welcome to play it there. Uh, you can't play your sad songs at a pub; it doesn't go over. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Happy, uh, just I just love playing the Commodore, and they're so kind. Uh, the G family is just so wonderful, and uh, they'll treat you like family too. This is the first show I did with Lindsay Buchert uh, for uh, at the seniors' residences. This was Montgomery Place here, right in Strathern. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can see we uh, we are socially distant from everybody. Uh, we had a, uh, one of the sound guys from Strathern Hall come and handle sound for us, and Lindsay and I plugged in. And we just blasted music at the sides of that building uh, so the residents could open their windows and, uh, and get some music. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is another sh picture. Yep. Uh, We've seen, seen, seen that before, movie. yeah. The, the Vanguard picture. Uh, this, uh, yeah, this one, uh, this was, I think, this was Good Shepherd's Kensington, uh, the show we did there. Uh, and you can see Lindsay Buchert in the background. Uh, I can't remember the name of the organizer from Good Shepherd, but that's uh, who's beside me in the pink. And uh, Sam Ireland of uh, Remax River City uh, uh, is uh, taking a selfie at the same time in the uh, in the jaunty cap, as we like to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, here is another show. I believe this might be Citadel Care Center in Sh uh, St. Albert with Lindsay, again, playing in other seniors' residence. Mm -hmm. Ah. And here we go. So uh, I have two joys in this picture. Uh, in the foreground, we have my daughter. She was just learning to skate, and she's, she's got her little skate pusher there. Uh, and uh, she was quickly learning to skate all the way across the rink without her pusher. So that's that was a big accomplishment this winter. And in the background, you can see my mother, who uh, turns 74 tomorrow and uh, mm -hmm. she's skating too and in this picture she is one year removed from being in the hospital at the Mazankowski. Uh, big shout out to the folks at the Mazankowski because she had a heart attack and a year later she's out skating with my kids so uh, a shout out to the folks over at the Mazankowski. they do great work and uh, one of my very best friends in the world just came out of the Mazankowski a week ago or he had served. Uh, I went for a walk with him on Strathern Drive just yesterday. So mm -hmm. again, they do great work over there mm -hmm. and a big shout out to them. Uh, there's uh, Gwen learning to ski. That's her first time on skis and uh, we made it to the top of the hill and uh, willing to She's, try to come down. So this photo has some, this photo has some attitude in it. I can detect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's uh, she's giving me her best pose at the uh, Royal Alberta Museum pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Does she like winter of, uh, the same as some summer? Or uh, no, but uh, she's starting to. Uh, I, you know, as, as you, as you introduce things that you can actually do that are fun in the winter, it, uh, it gets a little bit easier to sell winter to, uh, to her, but, uh, it's, uh, it's, it hasn't been, it hasn't been easy. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, we're out for a scooter ride there with a good view of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for uh, sharing the stories that goes along with these uh, these photos here. Now, we, we do have some video clips that uh, we could uh, selectively show up. Uh, portions of to our viewers so they get a sense of again the, the kind of music that you, you write and the kind of music that you also uh, uh, perform and, and all those sort of wonderful things but uh, uh, before we go there though uh, grabbing the next video clip uh, tell us your thought on perhaps the um, um, you know you use you chose to sort of focus on music as a full-time you know preoccupation and profession and whatnot tell us your perspective on music as a profession i know many of our friends out there who are watching they have their own take on it but but what's your take on you know deciding to become a professional musician why'd you do it are you glad you did it uh, what's your take on professional musicianship during um, you know not just COVID time but 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 in these times in general Sure, dude. Uh, so I think I have a different take on it than others, and uh, and I and I think that that's you know it's fair. I uh, I didn't plan for any of this. Uh, I became a stay-at-home dad when I took a layoff. The economy changed, and uh, and my company was no longer gonna fly me down to Texas to teach classes for people they weren't hiring anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, uh, I forced gumped my way into this. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not planned. This, this sort of happened. Um, mm -hmm. And so I have great um, respect for those musicians who decided I'm going to be a musician. And they went about the going to school or taking lessons and getting the skills that they were going to need to do this and then just decided to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that it, it isn't a fallback for them. Mm -hmm. This was their, their first choice. Mm -hmm. um, I, I uh, so uh, some of the stuff that I might say might conflict with what they say. And uh, so I in no way mean to in any way disparage or discredit what they're saying because they came at it from a completely different place and a place that I respect a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, there's, you know, there's different, there's battles that go on within, within any industry and there's battles that go on within the music industry regarding, you know, what people should be charging and, and what have you. And, uh, I, and I, I can't get involved in a lot of that because again, and I came at this differently than a lot of them at the same mm -hmm. time, some of the best lessons I've been taught were by young musicians. Uh, yeah. Uh, a younger musician by, by the name of Christy Feniak, uh, mm -hmm. out of, uh, Drayton Valley. Uh, mm -hmm. she taught me maybe the most valuable lesson that I've ever been taught. And it was one of the first big events I'd, at Cafe Haven, I used to do an event for youth songwriters, a youth songwriter showcase, and uh, mm -hmm. I brought them in. And, and uh, in one of the shows, I, uh, I said, hey, do you mind playing last? Uh, you're going to have to hang out here all the time, but I'd like to finish strong, and, uh, and I, I, I think that you, uh, you, you do that. And she looked at me and gave me a blink blink and said, yeah, whatever you need. You know, how can I help? And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and she, uh, she at this point had already been like co-writing songs in Nashville. She's, uh, you know, she certainly had more experience than some of the other uh, young songwriters that I had there, but uh, so easy to mm -hmm. work with. And at the end of it all, I thought, wow, she was so just such a joy to work with and so easy to work with. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, maybe if I was more like that, I might get more gigs. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. uh, and so I, uh, I tried to take that approach. I tried to mm -hmm. take that mm -hmm. approach when, uh, when someone yep. would say, when Tyler Johnson asked me, Hey, you want to jam on your deck? And this guy, I don't know at a bar says, Hey, you want to jam sometime? I said, yes. And it was mm -hmm. one of the, you know, it was a life changing moment. When I talked earlier today about cha moments that change your life, things are never different, never the same after that moment. Mm -hmm. The moment I said yes to playing guitar with Tyler Johnson changed my life, literally. Um, mm -hmm. Dune, I just got a notice for some reason this 
this computer I'm using uh, runs out of power really fast. I didn't think okay. that was going to be an issue, but it is. Yep. Can I just grab some power and plug this thing in? Um, uh, yeah, you just give me like five seconds. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to play a video, uh, which in case you go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that here. And uh, so, yeah, in terms of the video, I was going to ask him which one, but I'm just going to grab the latest one here. And I'm just going to hit play here and see how uh, our viewers enjoy it. So uh, while we do that, let's go ahead and play this, uh, this next thing here. And uh, uh, we'll... There it is, and uh, we're going to share it. We're going to maximize it. We're going to uh, just maybe take my video out here and uh, and do that. So that's that's the live version of uh, the kid. We're gonna pull up another uh, video here. I'm just going to actually just going to peruse through uh, some of the videos you have on your site here, my friend, your YouTube channel. So um, let's let's listen to this one. Hold on, hold on. I uh, picked the wrong one. Uh, let me do this one then. place is this uh kim that is the uh rocky mountain ice house downtown mm -hmm. uh every wednesday night or tuesday night tuesday night they do uh what they call the big dreamer jam hosted by uh uh harry Gregg and uh and sponsored by uh riverdale recorders mm -hmm. and uh yeah they do a great job and they have Again, it's another great place in Edmonton where you just show up on a Tuesday night and you will see some of the most outrageously talented people play. Uh, I can't believe they let me play, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, if you, you show up there on a given Tuesday and you may run into uh, Jessica Haina or Maddie Storvold or any number of outrageously talented Edmonton musicians uh, mm -hmm. playing, you know, great stuff. And uh, yeah, with no cover, no anything, just walk in, watch some people play music. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Isn't a kind of a fast paced song? It, it is. So when you find 
I saw our friend Tony there, right? In the shot. <laughs> so, uh, cool. Uh, wonderful. Now, so tell us in terms of the, uh, what's your plan? Uh, COVID is going to kind of at some point going to subside and hopefully um, be well under control. And, you know, we're going to kind of move on. Uh, uh, what's your direction in the next three years? If you look at three years, what does it look like for your musical journey? So musical journey wise, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, so here's my thing. I want to play folk this someday. Mm. This is, this is like my, my entire musical journey. It's like, it ends at someday I play folk fest. There you go. Side stage, it might be something. So I, I set myself a goal years ago. Um, none of this is about getting famous for me. Uh, mm -hmm. none of this is about, you know, touring the world. Um, the, all of this is about playing Edmonton Folk Fest. Uh, yeah. I, I've been a festie for a number of years now and, uh, uh, Joe DeShane and I, we talked about it once upon a time and said, man, you know what? I want to play Folk Fest. Wouldn't that be cool to play Folk Fest someday? And, uh, yeah, so I just started this, uh, as this music thing has started to happen, I realized, okay, well, that's my goal. Um, how do I do that? So part of that is, you know, you can't play covers at Folk Fest, I don't think. Mm. Uh, they're not going to hire you to come in and uh, play a bunch of other people's songs. So, you know, you can play a couple of covers here or there if you change them up. But uh, for the most part, you got to bring something to the table. So. Uh, putting together the songs I've written and then rearranging them, uh, writing new songs, developing all of that has been towards this end. Um, Going to put together an EP, uh, again, with the idea of maybe getting some festival work. Uh, and I don't think that my first festival out of the gate is likely to be Edmonton Folk Fest. So, you know, I, I'm... Hopefully, I'm going to play some other festivals and be uh, be asked to come play. And uh, eventually, maybe Edmonton Folk Fest says, you know what? We'd like to have that guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I can uh, walk over five blocks and uh, and go play a concert, you know, five blocks from home. There you that go. Fantastic. This will be, you don't even, don't have to have any trouble finding parking uh, stalls or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. No. You know, uh, my wife and I used to live um, really half, like half a block from Bonnie Doon Hall. And so half a block from Bonnie Doon Hall, we, we definitely could uh, could have walked to Folk Fest for sure and uh, did one time. But uh, tell us in terms of the, uh, so that's Folk Fest and whatnot. I'm going to subtitle. It's going to be like, uh, you know, Kim Gates' Journey to the Edmonton Folk Music Festival. That's what this uh, whole hour is going to be, right? It's like, I'm going to retitle it. I'm going to change all of that up, right? So uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, YouTube being what it is, it uh, has all kinds of commercials. And uh, um, <laughs> I, I have, uh, this is the first time it happened where I finished with playing your video. I normally pause it. And uh, I was so engrossed in the conversation with you. I did not pause it, my friend. And then sort of ads came up. So, oh. yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, in terms of the um, folk music festival, what would be a similar thing? Is there a stepping stone? Is there a, you know, prior to oh. folk music? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you start, you start playing open stages and then, uh, you know, small venues, uh, you know, the first time I was asked to play at the Brick and Whiskey, uh, you know, the first time Bill Bourne looked at me and said, Hey, you know, would you like to be a feature at the Brick and Whiskey? I, uh, it was, uh, it was scary as all heck for me, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. at the same time, it was, uh, it was an incredible honor. And I was so honored because I had so much respect for the people I'd seen play there already. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was just, well, flabbergasted, to be honest, that anybody would, you know, uh, allow me to play there. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah, there, there's these stepping stones. Uh, I think the stepping stones f- from here forward are going to be, you know, small festivals. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I had I, this was going to be the first festival year. I, I had a, a, f- a festival in Millet that I was booked for this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a little late getting into some of the others, you know, uh, but uh, there's small folk festivals throughout the interior of BC and mm-hmm. uh, in small town Alberta. And I sort of see that as being where, where I'm going to end up starting, mm-hmm. you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe Sasquatch gathering mm-hmm. in, uh, in a couple of years or next year, uh, you know, leading to maybe North country fair, maybe mm-hmm. if I'm lucky, um, mm-hmm. North country fair, South country fair, uh, the smaller music festivals throughout uh, again, millet and, uh, I know that uh, there's one out at Pigeon Lake. Pigeon mm-hmm. Lake has a small music festival. You know, maybe Beaumont Blues and Roots. Um, if I'm lucky, you know, the, that'd be a beautiful place to play. Um, the Star Belly Jam and, uh, uh, you know, Salmon Arm. Uh, Salmon Arm has a, a little music festival as well. Uh, maybe yeah. something up north, uh, Yellowknife. Uh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. I'd love that. Um, and yeah, maybe a, a few of these little festivals and, uh, as I continue to develop and, uh, and develop, uh, and develop my act with and without a band and, uh, and then see where it leads, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Wonderful. Uh, again, I'm still learning. I am just, I am making this up as I go along with the guidance and help of so many friendly, kind people who are guiding me along this path and uh and yeah i couldn't i wouldn't be able to do this by myself i i wouldn't even know where to start Mm -hmm. i'm just people sharing you know uh, people will say uh, you know oh musicians and you you hear talk about egos and that kind of thing and i mean i'm sure it exists but my experience of the music industry at least the, the folk side of it what we do here in edmonton i uh i my experience has been just of kind people supporting each other, helping each other. Um, and I can't say enough about the guidance and and support I've received from folks in the Edmonton music industry, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. particularly the folk side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, given that, uh, uh, as as we sort of wrap this up here, uh, just around the corner here to kind of wrap this uh, conversation up, tell us, do you have a highlight, uh, a story that you can tell that is the highlight of your musical journey? Or it could be funny, it could be uh, poignant, it could be, you know, any kind of story that you like to share that says that really stood out in all of the stuff. That, any, anything comes to mind? Oh, I... Uh... I'm that show that uh, that show that's featured on uh, on my YouTube clips. Mm. Uh, that was uh, that was an incredible thing for me because um, I hadn't really up until that point ever really played with a band, a full mm. band. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, you know that was absolutely a, a highlight for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, as far you know the shows at the Brick and Whiskey. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that was like a, a big eye opener for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, the, I don't know, just the, the opportunity to play in that place with the people I got to play with, uh, for the people who were in the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, that was absolutely uh, the you know a highlight for me, but also just working with the musicians I've gotten to work with, uh, uh, you know, Drew Price, having musical friends who just come out and support and play music with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's the true highlight. I, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Tyler Johnson and Drew Price and Joe DeShane will sit down and play music with me. Lauren Lynn has the most beautiful voice if she ever knew just how good she was, uh, she'd be an unstoppable force. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but she, uh, she just, she's got this beautiful, beautiful voice. And the people who've supported me and played music with me, I'm so grateful for. 
Brandon Lyons, uh, you know, uh, Smoky Fennel, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Kyle Mosiek, and uh, and of course uh, Harry Gregg. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah. know, I am uh, I'm blessed, I guess. So if we're gonna talk about a highlight, musical highlight, I, I have trouble with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But uh, recording has been a highlight and also soul sucking because it's really way harder than I ever thought it was going to be <laughs> uh, to hear yourself and to hear yourself make the same mistake, like in 20 takes in a row. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but I think the true highlight has been the people I've met and the people I've been able to work with uh, mm. yourself included, Mr. Dean mm. and, mm-hmm. uh, and Tony Rufo who introduced us and uh, introduced me to a lot of the other music in this city. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so grateful to have friends like him, friends like you, mm-hmm. uh, doing these incredible things. And yeah, I, uh, that's, that's my highlight. All right. That's, cool. I'm well, wonderful. That there. That's what there, it is. There you go. That's, that's all folks. He said, um, now as we wrap this up, tell us, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sort of ask you the same question that I asked some of our guests. If there are three words that, you know, you're, you're a writer, you're a songwriter, you're a lyricist. I'm just asking for three words, three separate independent words that you want our viewers to uh, to think about or reflect on as they think about this conversation with you over the past hour and a bit here. What would those three words be that you want our viewers to uh, either now or later on watching in the replay, keep top of mind? Uh, you know, words that are imparted to them by Mr. Kim Gates on this hour on a, what is that? Is it Tuesday afternoon? Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon. Uh, compassion. Mm-hmm. Compassion. Uh, I, uh, I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm scared. I'm worried for the world. Mm-hmm. I'm worried for the world uh, right now because there are lots of people who are, you know, uh, struggling and a lot of people who are fighting against, well, they think they're fighting against each other, but that may, sometimes they're just fighting against a system that, you know, is, uh, is a little bit broken. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think some people might be encouraging folks to fight with each other when really what we need to do is have compassion for each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, kindness. Uh, mm-hmm. I think kindness and compassion go a long way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other word, uh, another word is joy. Mm. Find your joy. Find something that brings you joy uh, and true joy. Uh, you know, uh, there's like a beautiful tree just outside my window. The The sun is shining on it. And, uh, and if we stop and we just get, the other thing I think is quiet. Mm. We've got to get quiet, mm-hmm. get quiet and listen to each other, get quiet and listen to the world, mm-hmm. get quiet and listen to ourselves, mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, uh, maybe meditation, yeah. um, but, uh, but quiet. Uh, I find that uh, the things that I'm struggling with in life, if I can get, you know, sometimes camping, camping's good for that, I think, mm-hmm. uh, getting out of into nature and just being quiet and still for a bit. And without the constant, uh, you know, the the engagement of my phone or the engagement with this or the engagement with that, and even I have to take a step away from music mm-hmm. in order to be quiet because, mm-hmm. you know, we want to fill our our brain and fill our time and space with stuff mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. And if we can get quiet, oftentimes we'll, uh, you know, uh, we'll we'll find out what we're what we're missing. How mm-hmm. I feel. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, compassion, well- joy. And quiet. Those compassion. are my three words. Three words. I see you switch it up a little bit. You say compassion, kindness, and joy. And then we're going to add. Oh, no. Compassion okay. and kindness, I meant, went together. Oh, I, I see. Wondering. Okay. I was wondering. Okay. The kindness so got, is inside the compassion. There you go. So we got compassion slash kindness, joy, and quietness is what I heard. Yeah. Stillness, I guess. Stillness. Stillness. Quiet. Stillness. stillness. Stillness, stillness. Yeah. All right. Well, well. Thank you for those, um, Kim, and uh, thank you for your time that you spent with us today and this afternoon. This fine, a uh, little bit windy right now where I'm sitting, looking out, but uh, the the trees are kind of swaying, kind of be- beautiful as well. But uh, thank you for your time and your sharing of your music and your stories and your uh, insights along the way. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll just uh, 
hang on in the green room there, but we're going to say goodbye to our, our viewers now uh, in the, the internet land and later on who's watching this. So uh, folks, uh, take good care of yourself, take good care of one another. And until we meet again, have the uh, wonderful rest of your day, folks. Okay, Thanks bye, guys. Kim. Thanks uh, again, Thank Kim. you, Lori. Thank you, Carol. And uh, the rest of you folks out there, I'm not sure who you are, but you know, hope you enjoyed it.